All right. Hey, guys. Hey, Miami. This is Finn from Berlin. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about NFTs and music uh, and the future for creators. All right. So this is going to be um, the topic for the next half hour. And then um, please join us afterwards uh, for questions. If you have any questions, please let me know. So let's dive right in. Like, I really think that NFTs are here to set, uh, set to change the music industry as we know it forever. Um, I really do believe that we're going to look back like in two or three or four years and, uh, and it will be fundamentally different than it is right now. And I think that's very exciting. So I'm, I'm happy to share a little bit of what's going on. But first of all, little disclaimer. What I'm going to tell you, this is not any investment uh, or advice, right? This is no advice for investing because we're going to be taking uh, going to be talking about cryptocurrencies. So it's just information, but it's no investment advice. So with that said, is the whole craze about NFTs, is this hype or is this heaven for creators? Um, for creatives like you guys, like you guys here in Berlin. So that's what we want to explore. And I'm sure talking about hype, I'm sure you heard about you know, Steve Aoki dropping um, his Dreamcatcher NFT collection. You heard about maybe Dat Mouse had a crazy successful NFT drop, or Blau. And they all made millions releasing their records or their, their tracks on the blockchain as NFTs and made millions. So today I'm going to talk to you about what are NFTs, how do they really work, who do they benefit and how to get started, right? Because I think at the end of the day, it's really about making this tangible and I want you guys to have the most value for this. So um, yeah, I just want to show you how you can create your own NFTs and then afterwards we can talk about maybe some questions you have. All right, so first of all, I want to introduce to you um, Beatport NFT Lab. So we found it uh, together with the fine folks from Beatport, we found it the NFT Lab. It's Beatport's new NFT unit. It's a holistic one-stop shop creation uh, for creation and distribution of NFTs. So that means um, we're hooking labels and artists, uh, we're hooking them up with designers, with strategists, and with creative tech. So the whole spiel for creating NFTs. Um, and we are co-founders of the NFT Lab. Um, I founded the company called Define Creative, and we're a creative tech company in the field of Web3 that we have a focus on content creation and holistic strategy um, and also we're creating interactive extended reality formats right uh, so a little bit about myself like um i'm also a recording artist and songwriter that's my my background so um before all of this all of the creative tech stuff and working with big brands first and foremost i'm, I'm a musician and creator like you guys so i um and then in my 20s i founded a um, publishing company and then went on to found a record company so i know the the value creation side from both uh, you know from both sides like on an indie label major label but also now working with brands and labels right so with that said um what are nfts right um and i'm sure you all heard some 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 definition so i'm just going to start with the definition and then we're going to break it down so a non-fungible token nft is a unique and non-interchangeable unit of data stored on a digital ledger, which basically is the blockchain. NFTs can be associated with reproducible digital files, such as photos, videos, and audio. NFTs use a digital ledger, again, the blockchain, to provide a public certificate of authenticity, a proof of ownership, but it does not restrict the sharing or copying of the underlying digital file. That's important, and we'll learn why in a second. And last but not least, the lack of interchangeability or fungibility distinguishes NFTs from blockchains, uh, blockchain cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. Okay, now you know more, right? No, I don't think so. Like, I, like when I first read this, I was like, what the hell does that mean? Like, I think it's really, it's really confusing, right? So let's break this down on a more um, simple level. So Think, when you hear fungible, think of replaceable. I think it's a much easier word. Like, think of replaceable. So fungible means it's replaceable. Um, replaceable by another identical item, like Bitcoin or money, right? So if you, if, 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 if you give me like $100, I give you $100, we can change, right? If you don't mind, I don't mind. Same with Bitcoin. 
Right. So, by the way, I accept uh, tips in Bitcoin afterwards. So it's uh, yeah, right. <laughs> no. So, but like money and and Bit Bitcoin is is uh, fungible. So what means non fungible means it's unique and therefore not replaceable. And to maybe give you a, an easier example, let's take a guitar. Right. Um, so this is the most expensive guitar ever sold in the world. Um, it's a it's a Stratocaster um, by an artist called David Gilmour. Uh, he played in Pink Floyd, um, and this black strat got sold at an auction for three point nine million dollars. So, y what do you get? You get a certificate at the auction, right? You know it's him. There's all this stuff in place to make sure it's exactly that one and not from the record shop, uh, guitar shop down the road, right? So it's one of a kind. That's non fungible. You cannot replace it. If it if it gets you know if it falls down, it's broken. That's it. But there's fungible Fender Stratocasters, which are rep replica, right? So the company that produces these guitars also produces a replica for th 3,000 <laughs> euros or dollars, right? Instead of 3 million. So that's the difference between fungible and non-fungible. And also think about NFTs as a collectible. Um, so what can you collect with them, right? So NFTs can contain JPEGs, audio, video, tickets, and now it gets into the moments and experiences. I think that's a cool one. Uh, and also like animated GIFs, right? And loads of different stuff, but we start there. So I'll give you an example. So this is an NFT um, that my team created. Um, it's, we minted the first ever world record um, by a triathlete called Jan Frodeno. And he broke the, broke the world record seven hours 27 minutes a cr a crazy race <laughs> anyways so he broke the, he broke that we minted an nft actually we minted it during the race right and while we like at the end of the race because it wasn't clear if he's going to break the world record or not he broke the record we minted it on the spot and then the, the guy on the tv station was like hey now you can buy it as an nft and uh, people you know could buy it we sold it for um, for um, ETH at the time, like uh, 13,000 euros, but it shows you you can mint a moment, right? I don't think that's interesting. But you can also mint a tweet. Um, Twitter founder Jack Dorsey minted his uh, first tweet for two and sold it for $2.9 million. Um, or you can mint a, a, a GIF like the Neon Cat. Or, and now it gets crazy, I think, you can mint a JPEG. <laughs> And this JPEG, I'm sure you heard about, is by an artist called Beeple. Um, it's actually 5,000 JPEGs stitched together. Um, and it's, it was sold at Christie's, so it means it's also, it's not just a nerdy thing, it's at Christie's, this auction house. Um, and it was sold for 69 million. And I think this is where it starts to get a little bit mind-bending. Because the question is, and I asked the same question myself, like, why the hell should someone pay $69 million dollars for a JPEG, <laughs> when you can look at it and even save it to your desktop, we could you could use your Surface, you could uh, go online right now, Google this this image, and you can save it to your desktop. You have the same JPEG, but it's the same. But it's it's you know, and and this is where it gets interesting. But it's 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 not that one, right? So what creates the value, right? So this is the one. So we can look at it. It's the same. I just you know downloaded it, um, and you can do the same thing. So what creates the value? So again, like we, like we said earlier on, um, NFT is a collectible. So NFTs provide a public certificate of authenticity for everyone to look at, it, by the way, but it does not restrict the sharing or copying of the underlying digital file. That's really important because um, actually it's the other way around. The more you share it and the more you know about it, the more valuable it becomes, right? So, but still, there's only one person who can own it. So, a good example is like the Mona Lisa, right? So, you can print millions of postcards, and there's been millions and millions of postcards, coffee marks, whatever. Um, and the Mona Lisa, the original one that's hanging in the Louvre, doesn't get less valuable. Actually, it gets more valuable, right? So, but still, the, the important thing is how can you prove that this is the real one? And that's where it gets interesting. So it's about ownership, but it's also about status. Um, so I give you another example. There's the Board Ape Yard Club. You might have heard about it. So this one is the Board Ape that um, Jimmy Fallon bought. And um, 
He bought it very recently, November 8th, and he paid $145,000. And now if you think that's very cheap and you want to get yours um, for Christmas, you're a bit late to the party because actually right now, if you go online now, um, the cheapest one you can get costs you $239,000, uh, um, right? And it gets even more crazy. On the high end, <laughs> um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a metaverse company um, called Sandbox, and they just bought their very rare uh, board ape for 2.4 million. And it's rare because it has a fur of gold and laser eyes, right? So this is where it gets really absurd. You think like, okay, this is just completely absurd. Um, but it shows you that status really matters because why do people buy these? It's like, like with that company, they want to post it on their Twitter and be like, hey, we have the rarest ape, right? And I believe that in, um, you know, maybe two or three years from now, we will, instead of like, you know, showing, uh, I'm, I'm not going to look at your Instagram like I do now, but I'm, I'm going to look at your NFT collection, you know, and that will show me your social status and we will interact in that way that we will you know, check out our NFT collections. So I think it's an interesting interesting um, development. So now that we know what an NFT is, the question is how do they actually work? Um, and it's going to be a little bit tacky, but I, keep it as, I try to keep it as you know, simple as possible. Um, first of all, NFTs, like I said already, I, I believe they are going to shape the future we live in. And here's why. They will provide access to the metaverse they already do, right? So they already provide for brands, they provide um, access to digital experiences. Um, but that is the future, right? This is leading in the future. So before we go there, I want to say, let's have a look and uh, look back, look into the past. And to me, this, this quote from 94 by a gentleman called John Perry Barlow is kind of at the heart of this um, problem, and he, he proposed a riddle. Um, I can paraphrase it for you. Um, so basically what he said is that, you know, while all of this is going on, and you have to see where, the, at, at the time, the internet was two years old, right? So the internet was a baby, it was just get, getting started. And not very unlike NFTs, I think a lot of people in 92 thought the internet is like a scam or something you know, for some crazy techie nerds, but it's going to go away. Um, and he said at the time when all of this happened, he said, well, if this is happening, um, how can we make sure that we get paid for the work we do with our minds? And I think as creators, that's exactly what, you know, what, what, what we are thinking about every day. It's like, how can we make sure we get paid for the work we, get, we do with our minds? Um, and he was also saying, like, in a time where every, like, where information gets copied the whole time and it's free and you don't even know, like, if you put out a track and you said you have a release coming up, right, you don't even know who makes a copy of your track. You don't know um, who's actually, um, yeah, who's playing it somewhere. So you don't know that. And the question is, while all this happens, how can we make sure we get paid for it? Um, and... Uh, even further, like 10 years further, uh, f back in the future, in 84, um, there was another gentleman called John Stewart, and he basically said that um, information wants to travel free. And I think that's really important, because that's also why did the internet become so successful, um, because we all share everything all the time for free, right? That's, that's at the basis of it. Um, so I think that's really important to see these kind of two points, right? So at the one hand, how can we make sure we get paid for the work we do with our minds? On the other hand, at the core of the internet, uh, you know, information and also in a, in a way like music wants to be free. And I think that's where, um, where streaming came in as a big disruptor uh, in music um, and, you know, revolutionized that because you don't have to pay per track or per album, but you actually, you, you know, you can stream for, for a certain amount. And the same thing happened now with NFTs. What's going to happen is, I believe it's the biggest disruptor since streaming, right? So it's the big, biggest disruption. And uh, so I'm going to give you a number, and you guys have to guess what it is. So 
you know. This amount you get paid per streaming? Yes, it's, it's the amount you get paid per stream, right? So, and I think as a creator, that's something that's like, that's not right. Like you have to, you have to, you know, have a lot of streams to buy your next coffee, right? So that's, I think, why NFTs have this powerful, um, you know, the chance to be so powerful right now because they offer you uh, an alternative um, solution for that. Okay, so the question is, you know, with with all that said, like, how actually, how, how who paid for this, right? If the information was free, like, till now, who paid for this? It's advertisement, right? So up till now, everything was paid by advertising. And um, so, you know, that's like a little detour, but now if we come back to NFTs, so um, what makes it so valuable? It's ownership and it's this scarcity, right? Something needs to be scarce. Um, and NFTs solve Barla's riddle of how we can get paid for the work we do with our minds. And I'm gonna show you guys a few examples where we can uh, um, dive in. So Blau, for instance, right? You guys, I'm sure you heard about Blau. Um, and he, um, and I think this is really interesting. Um, he re-released his album from 1918, right? Uh, sorry, 20, 2018. Um, it was a re-release. So he re-released this album that was already out. Um, and he made $11.6 million on it. And I think that's so, so amazing, right? So it's, it's, it's not even new, unreleased music. He just utilized this technology in order to, you know, to, 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 to make that profit. But also, it's really important to say, he didn't come out of nowhere. He had already 11, like 1 billion streams, right? So that's, that's also important. It's not like, like oh, now I, I got NFTs as a, as a technology, and it's, it's not a get-rich-quick uh, scheme, uh, but it's actually, you know, it's a tool that we need to be able to use. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very powerful tool. Um, here you guys see another um, collection that Blau dropped um, together with the artist Slime. Um, so I, I really uh, encourage you guys to check it out. Um, but also, like not just an electronic music field, also rock bands followed suit. The Kings of Leon dropped their album, NFT Yourself. Um, making two million um but it's not so much about the money it's again it's like what did they do with it so i thought it's really interesting they used it for like vip concert experience so you could get a um, a, um like a vip ticket for life you could go to every you know for your whole life you can go to the next uh, kings of leon concert or dead mouse i love these animations by the way i think they're really really cool and again you know it's it, it it speaks to the artist DNA, right? I mean, everybody knows like it's this iconic mask that he wears. So he obviously uses the masks. Um, he digitalizes them into 3D assets. Um, and then the cool thing is they, they are um, avatar heads. That means they're game ready and you can plug them into 4,000 metaverse platforms, right? So you can use them. You buy them and you can use them. Um, and so that just gives you an idea of like how to think about these things. Um, and here again, Steve Aoki from the Dreamcatcher drop he did made four point two five million dollars on that. Um, dropped on Nifty Gateway. It's one of the platforms, and you could get like a physical display, right? And then sometimes I don't know about you guys, but I sometimes ask myself, who buys an NFT for eight hundred eighty eight thousand eight hundred eighty eight dollars? So actually, in this case, it's known it was uh, bought by a former CEO of T-Mobile. But I, again, it's it's a status thing, right? You can you can say like, hey, I bought this, you know, almost a million dollars. But you can actually go and buy the first ones for I think six thousand dollars or something. So it's right. So here's a little here's like the all-time top ten of NFT music uh, music NFTs. So like I said, um, from in the top uh, number one spot is Blau. 17 million. Um, and then that mouse has actually holds the record for the largest volume and units uh, for um, yeah one drop that already had 6,000 units. And also I think it's interesting Don Diablo made the top 10 with just two NFTs and one unreleased song and one exclusive live footage. Um, and the other thing is um, if you look at the data, um, I think this is quite interesting that more than 60% actually were fixed price sales, right? So you first think about like, okay, what's the fixed price? It's not the auctions. The auctions um, 
are 33 percent and the silence auction six percent so i think that's that's quite interesting and that shows you how you can think about nfts um yeah so if we if we look at the life cycle of an nst it's not just the production you really as an artist you have to think about the pre-launch activities how can you hype it up you know how can you get people excited about it how can you support the initial sale how can you make it in a way that it holds the value that you want to trade and collect it and then what are the post-sale activities so it's a little bit like if you plan your album release right you, you don't just plan a, like you know your your release show you have to think about the whole campaign for a whole year um and there's a few things like you know most successful music nfts they have visuals at their core um, there's things like dynamic art that means that the NFTs change over time. Um, as I said, you can attach them to live events. And the way this works is there's a smart contract um, uh, th that's part of the NFTs. And in the smart contract, you can actually put a lot of things. For instance, you could say, well, you know, there's a, there's a hidden you know, department where you can say, okay, there's a ticket for life. Or what you can also do is... In the smart contract, you can say, if my NFT gets resold, every time it gets resold, I'm going to make 10% of the profit of that. So that's that also in itself is a revolution, right? Because as a creative, for the first time, if, it get, if a piece of art gets resold, you profit of that. Because staying with the, with the guitar, like if somebody bought that guitar you know, for three million, now he sells it for six million, D David Gilmore is not going to get any money from that auction, right? But with NFTs, he would. And I think that's also a game changer. Um, can use it for philanthropy, um, you know, obviously use it for good. Um, and on the note of using it for good, so who do they actually benefit? And let's first look at the benefits of NFTs. So first of all, obviously, you can generate a new source of income for the artists and the creators. Um, but also, it's a, it's a unique opportunity to express your creative DNA, right? So your NFT is going to look different than yours, and it's going to look different than yours, and it's going to look different than you guys in Miami. So it's something that's really, really unique, like all our clothes and everything we, we wear and the way we express ourselves in music and tracks and samples. Um, and that's what I think is super exciting about it. It's a different layer of expression. And also, and this one is, I can't stress this next one enough, it's a way to deepen the relationships with your community. It's all about community, and we will get to that in a second. And of course, it creates a new vertical for you to make money. So the question is, now we heard a lot about like major artists like Dead Mouse or Steve Aoki, but the question is, how about indie creators? Is this relevant for indie creators? And the good news is, yes, it is. <laughs> um, because NFTs create a new model for you guys to, to reach your fans directly. Um, and there's another really revolutionary um, concept that's actually possible now through NFTs, which is fractional IP ownership. So what does that mean? That means like if you release a track, I can own a piece of your track, right? So um, f fans can now own a piece of you, essentially. And I think that is that is really new. That's revolutionary because you you, you it wasn't possible to 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 auction out. Um, like you know, publishing rights with NFTs, you can. You don't have to. You can. But also, what's really interesting is you can auction a fraction of that, right? So I don't have to s auction out the whole song. I can say I'm going to auction out five percent of the of the IP, right? And so that means the other thing is that while you grow as an artist in popularity, um, your fans who actually invest in the NFTs they will also you know grow with you. And I think that's a beautiful concept. You will grow together. You will like rise together. Um, and here's another here's another uh, example where, um, for the song "Promise," actually the the um, the publishing rights were auctioned out as an NFT. So, like I said, it's all about community. It's all about relationships. And the question is, like, how does that translate, right? And a really another like very successful uh, example is uh, is Top Shots by NBA, and why is that so successful? Because obviously basketball has a huge community, right? So the question is, how can you reach your community? Again, Steve Aoki is extremely good at that. Um, he you know 
created this character and dropped it as a Dominion X. Um, so this is like this is like ways to dive really deep into an artist's universe, right? So you see a character on one drop and then the next drop, he gets his own like storyline and just like comes to life. So that's literally what the metaverse is about. And here's another example. This was just very recently uh, on the 2nd of um, December. Um, and then e now even Beeple like, looks small in comparison to that. There's an artist called Puck, and he sold 266,000 units of his NFTs um, and made 91.8 million. But it's not about the money. It's about, I think it's so interesting to, to engage your community in a way. And by the way, he was very known in his community, but to engage your community in a way that 266,000 people say, I want to buy into this, right? And the way he did it, for instance, was like, okay, if you buy a bunch of them, you can merge them together. And ultimately, they can all merge together. And there was all these really cool ways of you know, interacting with each other. And that's what it's about. So community-driven NFTs are really, really important. So two, two um, examples I would um, you know, recommend for you guys to check out. Amnesia Scanner, scanner amazing, amazing live act. Whoever saw them live... They, they 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 kill. They're so good. They created their own. It's called Scammer Market. Like really cool, very engaging. Um, Bonji Project also very successful. Were um, you know number one on OpenSea on this platform. Yeah. So with all that said, how to get started, right? So because now you think like, okay, well now I know like all these big artists. They you know they they do that. But how can you guys as creators um, profit from that? So, first of all, even if the analogy is not really perfect, but think of merch as an NFT uh, of NFTs as merch, right? Um, so think of like, what does your tribe want? That's the first question. So you have to figure out, as creators, as producers, as DJs, um, what's actually relevant for for your tribe, because there is no one size fits all solution. It's really really different for every artist. Um, and then we can look into the raw content. You know, and I broke it down for you. So this can be on the visual side, anything from photo content to GIFs, on the audio side, anything from full tracks or unreleased tracks to beats or samples, right? So think about the ingredients. Think about what could be attractive to your audience. And then you have to start with a strategy. You need a strategy first, like with a release, right? And that's what we do with the Beatport NFT Lab. All day, every day, we think about strategies for labels, for artists, because what's relevant in the NFT scene now is not is not going to be relevant next month. So it's like in music, as you guys always have to think, what's like a fresh sound? How can I stay relevant? Same thing applies here. Um, and again, I I would recommend you guys look at the at the successful guys, uh, the successful artists who've done it. Look at like Blau, you know, study it, auction details. How did he do it? How did he drop his ultraviolet collection? There's a, you know, study, st like, with, like with music, study the great. Huh? Um, and here's a good example, I think, that is because a lot of the things are not applicable for an uh, indie artist that a major artist does, but this one is. Custom music, the top bidder of that NFT will be able to collaborate with Blau on a brand new single tokenized as a one-of-one -one song NFT, right? So that means... For you guys, um, it only takes one crazy super fan, yeah, to be able to like, I want to collaborate with you. I'll pay for that. So there's a one of one, right? So so I think that's really exciting. That that really uh, is something you can do right away. So think about exclusive content like vinyls or whatever you can do to make this really appealing. You know, think about limited physical editions, limited things that you can um, offer your fans. Okay, so with all that said now. Let's look into how it actually works, right? And again, another disclaimer: <laughs> this is not this is no is information. It's not investment advice because what I'm going to say now is like, in order to get started on some of the platforms, not all of the platforms, you need to buy some cryptocurrency, you know. And in this case, it's Ethereum, um, and you need to create a digital wallet. Um, so in this case, it's MetaMask, but it can be a different a cryptocurrency. It can be a different wallet. Um, and then you have to add some crypto to your wallet. Yeah, so you have to add some Ethereum to your wallet. The reason that is, and that's also that's why you have to think about it. It's 
if you if you do it i'm I, I don't suggest it for everyone yeah i'm not saying like okay all of you guys go ahead and mint nfts like crazy because also there's an env an uh, environmental uh, side to this you know it costs a lot of energy so um, there's solutions for that i'm not going to go into this but there's an environmental thing side that you need to be aware of and also you have to think about um yeah what what do i want is this relevant but if you decide it is relevant for me choose a platform there's tons of them out there from nifty gateway to you know tons of smaller ones i'm gonna go for this example i'm gonna go with um open c which is the biggest one so you choose a platform next step you create a collection and actually i thought to to make it a bit more tangible for our session i actually created an nft um for just today just before i got here I was in my studio at home create an nft so i created this collection same title as uh as uh, as this uh keynote uh, nfts and music the future for creators so i created a new item you go and create a new item and that's quite interesting right so you have a bunch of different options from uh jpegs mp4s mp3s waf or even um 3d models um so i chose an mp3 um, of one of my songs um, that I created together with my um, yeah with my production brother Cosmo Kind, and then we basically you know you list an item, you set the price, whatever you want to make it. Um, I said one Ethereum. I felt confident today, um, uh, but uh, whatever it is, right? So and then you actually you ch you uh, select how long the auction is going to be. Can be one day, can be a week, can be longer. So I, I chose one week. And voila, you created your NFT. And uh, it has a fitting title. It's a song called Try Like a Child. <laughs> I thought it has a fitting title. So yeah. So um, And also, the good thing is like um, we produced that track we, um, together with, with a great producer in Holland. We own the master, so it's our song. And that's also something that's important to mention. Um, you can sell your like you can sell your publishing but most of the time you don't right like here i'm not selling the copyright of for this track i'm selling this track so in the description you have to fill out the description it actually says it's a um it's a mastered file one of one so edition of one um and you buy the mp3 you buy the track right um yeah so i think nfts are the future for creators so i really you know, all that's left to say for me is like, have fun and create your future. Thank you, guys. You guys have any questions? Yes, please. Um, what advice could you give for uh, an independent music label that wants to start creating NFTs and make money with it, with them? Yeah, so that's exactly what we're, you know, that's exactly what we're doing right now with NFT Lab. Um, start with the strategy, right? Think about your tribe as, a, as an indie label because nobody knows your audience better than you do. You know exactly which of your artists like have the most tractions, attraction, which of your artists are the most relevant. And then think about a strategy first and then think about what um, collaborators can you work with. So are there already some cool um, visual artists that you work with as a label? Um, are there, um, yeah, are there other new artists that you want to work with? And, and start thinking about how you can create value for your fans. Because the way to unlock that value is going to be, you have to create something that's desirable. The NFT is just providing you with the infrastructure and with the technological solution to make it, you know, r like to make it transferable. But if you, it's like, if, if I paint, if I paint um, a picture, yeah, uh, and it's, uh, clearly this is one picture, but if there's nobody who wants to buy it, you know, it's not, there's no value. So think about how can you create value for your tribe. Miami. You can hear me now. Are they volatile in the sense that they yeah, depreciate perfect. or appreciate in value, kind of like Bitcoin, or do they just continually increase? Yes, good question. Um, that's why I said that if you, so what a, what an NFT does, right? 
it's just it it's it's a certificate of ownership um and that's why i said you really have to think about not just how you create a hype but how how do they store a value that's actually why if we all share this people example it actually increases in value right because it it stays relevant it stays um it stays popular so it in order to to increase in value it has to increase in popularity right Otherwise, it might be a hot topic now. Board eight clubs is hot now, but maybe in five years nobody will remember board apes, and then your prices will go down. That's why you have to think about um, secondary market, right? It's like with art. Um, it's about yeah. It's it's about like how do you create a, a, a constant hype? How do you create something that stays relevant so that in a year or two years from now, people will still. Uh, want to buy that so on the secondary market it goes up like it does now with board ape um yeah so it's a, it's it's in, a, in, in quite a few ways it's like a stock market right so if if a lot of people like buy into stocks the stock goes up you know it, it appreciates um and if nobody cares it goes down so it's a, it's a similar similar concept hi how are you um so another question as the media is concerned, uh, meaning like the sound file or just the art file, whatever, does it get stored like on the blockchain, like as a token, or is it something that you have to store on our very volatile hard drives? No, it gets so it gets minted, right? So first of all, so um, if you go on on the platform, uh, like in that uh, example, OpenSea, you you upload your file, you know, you up like let's say a WAF or a MP3. You upload um, the other parts of the M NFT. So, you know, you have your, your picture. And usually, for instance, it's good to use a GIF because, you know, you want something that's attention grabbing. Um, you can upload other things. You can say, you know, there's, there's a way to attach a folder uh, to it. So that means that uh, that folder will only be, you know, will only be able to be opened by the person who buys that NFT, right? So you can store some hidden data there, right? Or you can store some other utilities. And all of these parts, you know, once they're uploaded at some point, um, you say, okay, now that are all, that's all the parts I want. Uh, then you say, okay, I'm going to mint it. And that's, that's why minting is important. Like once you mint it, it gets stored on the blockchain. And then once the information is on the blockchain, it stays there. You cannot tamper with it. You cannot fake it. You cannot counterfeit it. Um, and so then if the, you know, and that's the difference. Like if, it, if, if, if I mint an NFT and you buy it, um, it leaves my wallet and it, it comes into your wallet, but it's, I don't have a copy of it, it's gone, right? So there's, there's only one. And the way the system works is that um, there's, um, the whole system knows all the transactions. The, all the transactions are stored at the same time in the whole system, right? So that's why you cannot fake it. And, like I said, like think about, start thinking about um, what's a good strategy for you guys to start. Um, is this something that's relevant for you as a creator? And educate yourself up because I think it's a really, it's a very, very interesting time to get on board with these. And um, yeah, just even if you don't mint or create NFTs yourself, um, try to, you know, educate yourself about it. I think it's, it's worth the time. A quick question or a scenario, and then you tell me if it's possible. Say, for example, I have a party. Can I mint the flyer for the party and auction, I guess, to to just one person? Is that is that what's happening? So just one person owns that flyer or GIF that I create for this party. Is that pretty much and list well, the price that is even more expensive than the ticket sales and, you know. Exactly. I mean, you know I look, mean? It, th there's the only limit is is your is your um fa like your 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 fantasy there, right? So first of all, you can decide. Let's say you ha you take the flyer. It's it's a JPEG, a GIF, whatever. Um, you you mint that. Then you can decide. First of all, think about the addition. Is this a one of one? So is it unique? That obviously it's more valuable. Or you can also say. Everybody who comes to the party, I'm like, use it as a. You say, okay, I have a capacity for 100 people in my apartment. I make 100 fly uh, like um, NFTs, and they are the ticket to enter the party, right? Um, so that's possible too. 
you can say, um, you know, there's uh, there's a hundred tickets, and then there's one golden ticket, and that golden ticket um, is uh, the entry to, uh, you know, your car, and then you can drive with it, whatever. It's it's all possible, right? So it's it's only it's up to you to decide um, uh, how you want to structure it, and and it's almost like you create the rules for that, right? But again, the question is. Um, who's going to buy it? Like, who, for who? So the value is not in the technology. The value is in your creative solution of, you know, how can you make this party so appealing that the people want to go there and that the people want to buy that one ticket or the golden ticket or, you know, what's the special thing about that? Any other questions? I think we're good. Thanks so much, Vid. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you, guys. Thanks. <laughs>